I'm not going to talk too much about the platform. If you want to know more about it, you can obviously go to our website, schoolicky.com. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what we're calling uh, building in isolation with friends. So, like good engineers, let's talk a little bit about the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, we think this is an interesting use of Docker. So, the problem we have um, in DevOps sometimes is that we have shops now that are becoming more and more uh, very in the technologies are using different languages, different runtimes, etc. It's very rare now just to be a Java shop or just a C shop. You're usually using a ton of different technologies, sometimes even in the same application, right? So you wind up with this really weird mix of stuff. Um, some of these require global installations of system packages, um, some of them just conflict with each other. The problem that, uh, oh, and then also you have one of scale, right? Like as your company starts to grow, hopefully you're hiring more and more developers uh, so everyone's not staying up till three in the morning every day. Uh, and what you wind up with, especially if you're in a company that likes to build every branch, feature branches, uh, hot fixes, etc., as well as the mainline code, you wind up having a build system where you need to be building tens of builds at a time. You've got 20, 30 developers working in the same code base in separate branches. That's a lot of builds. You don't want your engineers sitting there waiting on a build to go through before they can merge or whatever your other gate checks are. Um, now, it's weird to be talking about a build system with Docker because if you know some stuff about Docker, the idea is that Docker kind of is the build system, right? You build your, you build your image. And it's going to contain all your dependencies. It's going to contain your code. Uh, everything's already vetted. Um, you're ready to go. And then you just spawn out containers using that image and you've shipped it. It's, it's live and, and you're good to go. Um, th there may be reasons why you can't do that. Maybe you work for a financial institution and you have a really hard time getting new technology adopted and you just can't get them to host a containerized application yet. Uh, maybe you've got a legacy application that is not stateless enough and it's going to be really expensive to make it stateless enough to really host it properly as a container. There's a whole bunch of things you could come up with. Uh, in our case, we do use Docker in production for a lot of our newer microservices, uh, but we still do have a very large code base that we're not quite there yet. We're chiseling away at all the things that are preventing us from shipping it as a container. But that doesn't mean we can't use Docker to solve other problems. It doesn't mean we have to host it in production. So um, one of these problems is this, the build system, right? Um, the standard solution, if you've got all these different technologies and you don't want them conflicting, is using agents as your isolation. This is basically physical isolation. Uh, you've got a Java agent, a Python agent, maybe you've got several PHP agents, one running a 5x branch of PHP, one running PHP 7. Uh, maybe you've got a couple applications that all need Node and they need different versions of Node. It's very difficult to standardize when you've got this situation. And it's also very expensive if you've got you know, commercial build tool that's licensed by agent. Something like we use like Bamboo, you're paying per agent, okay? So it doesn't really help you to, to be paying a lot of money per agent. And then also, again, the volume problem. Um, if I have to dedicate two of my five agent licenses to running Java, and that only leaves me three to run PHP, I, I don't have the throughput I need. Um, the other thing is it's kind of hard sometimes on developers in that situation because developers like to move fast, or at least we, we like to think we move fast. Um, so we want to be able to upgrade the version of Node.js we're using without creating a ticket over for this other team to go and install it. And then, oh wait, they, they went and did what I asked, but it wound up now conflicting with something already on there. Uh, and I've, I've now broken another team's bill. It's, it's a giant fight and a hassle. You don't, you don't want to have to deal with that. So what if we went with a concept where any, base, any agent could build any build you know, any, anything. Um, how would that look? It, it winds up being simpler when you, when you talk about it. Uh, development teams will supply us a Docker image, inside of which it has all the build dependencies they need. Um, they will provide us inside of that image basically a working uh, task runner, whether it's, it's a simple make file, Gradle, whatever the case may be, we don't care. Uh, you install Docker engine on all your agents, and that's it. And then you just kind of integrate that with, with whatever your build plan is, uh, as it's called in Bamboo. At that point, those two simple things mean that every agent you have can now run every build for every soft piece of software you have. Um, so I've got a quick 
demo. It's going to be more of a code review. I, I don't have the, uh, the guts to hand code it live while we're standing here. But uh, you should theoretically work. Um, and it does show some Wait. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be, oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to mirror our display. That's very good. This way I can see without turning on. So more bigger set. That's not freakishly large. Everyone can see that? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so I basically just downloaded a very simple um, example app. Um, we're going to do a very basic PHP Laravel app. Um, if you think about it from the developer's perspective, they're going to sit down, they're going to code their app. Chances are they're going to start working with it locally, right? So Docker is a good solution for that. If we take a look at the directory structure, you notice some things. If you see here, we've got a Docker compose file. Uh, so let's see if I actually have a container running, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's our, our I think it would be Docker compose. Oh. Cool, it's up to date. So we already have a container running. This container, or this application, doesn't really do much. Um, it just basically runs the Hello World of Laravel. It's just a simple generated site. But if we, if we take a step back for a second and look at the actual Docker container, uh, as we all know, that's defined in the Docker file. We, we kind of meet that first objective. Um, the development team has a Docker file by nature of the fact that they use it on their own machine, right? This is a very simple Docker file. We're just basing it off of Ubuntu. We're installing the things we need to run Laravel. Um, in this case, I chose to run it on PHP 7, mostly because we don't use PHP 7 at Schoology, so it kind of makes the point a little bit that we're going to be able to deploy a brand new application that we don't really have that on any of the agents. We wouldn't have it. We don't really use it. Um, does all the normal stuff, gets, gets whatever dev tools we need, uh, and then um, start, starts up the application. Uh, so any questions on the Docker file? Pretty straightforward Docker file on Atlantic. Um, then we got to kind of work a little bit from the middle of the thing and out. Um, normally, if you were going to build a piece of software, you downloaded you know, a source tarball or something on, on a Linux box, it, you do what? You do make, and then make install, right? Um, PHP doesn't have something like Gradle. I'm sure you could use Gradle to build a PHP app, uh, but it doesn't have anything like that. So in this example, I just used, a, again, a simple make file. So we're going to need a make file that can run inside the container to do my build steps. Uh, again, very simple in this case, because there's really no compiler involved. But there are some things we're going to want to do. Um, so the build task is just going to go ahead and, and run a nice, simple lint command to make sure we don't have any syntax errors. We're going to install all of our dependencies through Composer. Uh, we're going to make sure we have a config file. This is a Laravel thing. Uh, and then we're going to run some unit tests. Um, we also have another task called package, which is really just about, OK, after I've gone through and verified that this, this code is good, it passes all my tests, I want to be able to package it up as some kind of shippable unit. Now again, if we were able to containerize this application fully, let's say, we would just ship the image and spin up containers from it, for whatever reason we can't in this example. So we're just going to package this code up as a tarball. So this make file is going to run inside the container. Um, we also kind of need an interface for the build agent right, uh, to work with. What we want is that, again, that very simple experience of installing open source code. You want the build agent just to have to say make and make install. Um, it can't really do that if this is hidden inside the uh, image. So what we also have is uh, what I guess we're calling the outer make, outer make file. What we're going to do here is, is just kind of wrap starting up the Docker container. Um, we do that through some variables, but you know when we call make, when we call build, what we want to do is we want to make sure there's no existing Docker container uh, so it doesn't conflict. Uh, and then we're just going to tell it to go ahead and, and run the make file inside the container. It's going to run through all its build steps. And these steps, again, they can change every day. It doesn't matter to me, as an ops person, what the dev team decides to do to make their software. Um, we're not making the spaghetti for them. We're just making the spaghetti machine, right? Uh, so again, and same thing with package. So this is kind of the, the interface that the agent knows about. And you can keep this part consistent across all of 
your projects. It should be as simple, every project just saying make or make package to get some kind of deployable artifact. And then whatever they do inside the make file doesn't really matter to you um, as an ops person. It matters to them a great deal. Um, so once we have this kind of inner make file or running the container, and with this outer make file, we should be able to do what I just said. We should be able to just type make, and now we've got something building in a Docker container. We'll get to some of the other implications about this in a minute. Um, I don't know whether the Wi-Fi here is actually in the download here or not, but I guess we'll find out. Um, so let me go briefly while this is doing something uh, and, and talk a little bit about some of the implications and stuff. Uh, one of the implications I like about this, and we can go back to the Docker file to see it. I'm oh, sorry, the, uh, the make file to see it. If you see here, I've got a variable, a make variable, that tells me um, which image I'm using to run my build. Uh, due to Docker Engine's handy tagging feature, I've labeled this 1.0. Okay. Um, as you saw, this build doesn't do anything with Node, but let's say we made it a more complex app and we needed Node to start building some stuff uh, for, our, for our front end. We can add that to the Docker file. We can rebuild this image and we can ship it up as 2.0, 1.1, whatever we want to do, whatever our convention is. And all of that kind of, if you will, lives in the branch. The make file lives in a branch of your source code. That's what the agent's going to use. So when the agent builds your branch, your feature branch, where you're testing this new thing before you merge it and make everyone everyone's life hell if you made a mistake, um, you, you've tested it thoroughly on your machine. You know it works on the build agent in your branch, and you haven't bothered anybody. Right? Once you've validated all that, it's just like any other feature. You can merge it into master. And now everyone can take advantage of the fact that they can use Node inside the build. So you start to be able to apply some of the same concepts you do building a feature for your application to your, to your build system. Now, the other thing I like about this is that I don't know of any, I don't know Jenkins very well, but I don't know of any, any way in Bamboo to kind of look at two build plans and look at versions of the build plans. I don't really track that. Right? I can't do a diff between two build plans and see, see which steps changed. I can't test it out without cloning the whole thing. It's, it's kind of a hassle. If all that's in a make file and I can do everything locally the exact same way that the agent does it, I can debug builds. I can see when and who made a change to the build system. I can do all these things that I would do just with regular code. Yeah, by the way, you can do that with Jenkins. Yeah, well, yeah so maybe you can in Jenkins. Yeah, at least I don't, I don't know Jenkins very well. Um, so plus one to Jenkins. Um, so, what was that? Yeah. So, what we have now, like I said, once once this image gets pushed up to your registry or hub, whatever you're using, uh, and this is just code, so it, it lives in my source control system. Once that's all up there, um, all I'm really doing at that point is I have to kind of integrate that with my build system. Because again, all my agents are just running Docker. I didn't have to talk to my ops team yet. Uh, I, I didn't have to do anything. Maybe I have to talk to them to, to set up these steps. Um, but if I look, if I look at these steps, if I look at these steps, there's two steps. That's it. I mean, I could be doing 400 things in the make file. It doesn't matter. All I have to tell ops is, oh yeah, I've got this new thing. This is the repo it's at. Uh, set me up the standard build plan for it. I, I want to call it foo or whatever I want to call it. Um, and they're just going to type out this same script. Make clean, make package. That's it. Doesn't matter which piece of software they're building. That's all Ops has to know. And then going forward, any changes I want to make to it as a dev team, I work out, I test locally, I merge in. My build system doesn't care. Um, that's got a lot of advantages. Uh, we'll go back over those in a minute. But so, again, now I can just kind of run this thing. And it's going to run just like any other bamboo build. And again, like in this case, I've got like 13 agents that are running Docker right now, or, or whatever lucky number it is. Um, and it's going to run the same way. If this, if this thing fails, it should also fail for me locally. I've had a ton of times in, in past companies or other build systems, either I've even set up myself, where I've had a, a, you know, I'm building the software just fine locally, but it doesn't work on the agent because I forgot to install the, the system level PHP Mongo driver or something, but I had it locally and now it's failing and now I've got to work with ops, but it's three in the morning and I have to put my ticket out. It's not, it's not, not helpful. Uh, but now I can push all that stuff myself and just merge it in. Um, so this build, 
Uh, the other thing too is it just kind of, you know, following some conventions, um, which if we have time, I'll go over for you, but we always make sure we have a directory, basically a Docker volume mounted, that we can um, shove our artifacts in. In this case, we're producing that tarball we saw in the make file. So, uh, you know, Bamboo can pick that up and then it can use it for deployments or whatever else afterwards. Uh, so in this case, what, what we managed to do is Dockerize the build plan. Uh, and as I mentioned, there's, there's some nice advantages to that. Uh, the good stuff is, uh, I feel it lowers a lot of friction for the developers. They have a lot more control over the build steps they're using, versions of tools, whatever they decide as a team, it can really stay on the Scrum team. They don't have to involve anyone else. You get really great throughput. If you've got a bunch of developers working the same code base, again, you spin up a bunch of agents, they're all just running Docker, and everybody can build all their software, very little waiting. The sameness allows for some auto-scaling of the agents. Uh, this is some stuff I know that there is some cloud, but in this case, you know, if you're not a 24-7 shop, probably on the weekend or night, you're not doing a lot of builds, uh, you can kind of scale that down because you don't have to worry about, oh, do I need a mix of Java and, and Python and whatever agents, they're all the same. You just set them up, auto-register them, and you're good to go. You're just back to doing builds. Um, the, the build plans I mentioned a couple times are our version for you. You can branch. We do all kinds of things that you can't do, at least with Bamboo, uh, easily. Uh, and, and again, the, the builds work locally, same as on the real agent. Nothing uh, doesn't have downsides. Uh, so there is some friction, either you were dealing with already, or it, it introduces. If you have a scenario where your build actually needs to do Docker builds, it starts getting a little weird. You can kind of build Docker images inside of a Docker image. You gotta do some funky things with it to make that work. Um, but you can do it. Uh, we actually have an instance of that in our infrastructure. And again, it didn't require any changes to the agent. Um, when we first rolled this out, the only software uh, we were doing with this was uh, just PHP stuff. Uh, we had a whole team that came on board for a project all in Java, uh, all using different build tools. They were using great old, uh, all kinds of things that we never had at the company. They didn't have to do anything with the build agents. They just did it themselves and deployed it that way. Uh, so, so we saw some win there. Uh, but you do have that friction. There are maybe some weird corner cases. Um, there are also some things you can, can isolate without Docker. Uh, pretty well, like Gradle I know can be pretty well isolated. Uh, you can run multiple versions of it. The JVM doesn't usually install itself in a way where it's conflicting. Uh, so you have to ask yourself, is it worth going through the extra effort to put it in Docker as well, just, just for the sake of sameness? Uh, and then also, um, you have to kind of come up with some conventions. You know, when you have a Docker container, it's gonna run its root by default, unless you tell it not to. Um, that may be a problem if you're not running your Bamboo agent or whatever Jenkins agent as the root user. It may leave some files that it can't clean up. You might run into some problems. So this, there's some things that you have to figure out. But once you solve those, you've got your set of conventions that work with your build system. And, you know, things should be much smoother sailing. Uh, the other thing, too, we found useful is you also kind of have to monitor the Docker engine on the agents now. Um, depending on what you're using with Docker, you could run into some of the outstanding storage related bugs uh, and the Docker engine itself could run out of storage. Uh, so you want to monitor that, not just the agent. Uh, so those are some things that, that you kind of have to look out for. Um, I have t-shirts, so I figured we don't have a ton of them. So if anyone has questions, if you ask a question, you can have first practice. As long as you're not a school employee, you have enough. Question. question, but I have a t-shirt. Totally fine. How do you find yourself promoting through environments using make files? And where, where does the dev prod changes usually live in the system? So usually those are around configuration, right? So if you've already externalized a lot of your configuration, it's not as, as, as big of a, a problem. Um, so everything that we deploy with Docker, the, the configuration is external. Um, normally you just want the configuration you need to run the build. Um, we have for our production app, the config can ship separate from the actual code being built. So you have a very minimal amount of configuration, just what you need to run locally mm -hmm. as a developer, and then also what you need in your build system. But you don't have any of the, the environment files for the settings files for staging, production, et cetera. So really, you shouldn't need to do anything for that. Other questions? Do you have uh, simple unit tests or um, 
more complex, <coughs> complex form that can test your database queries. Yeah, so we got you. Uh, That's good. <laughs> tie in the database into the same container or parallel container, or just have a separate service. That Okay, good. That's an awesome question. Yeah, and you can totally run into that. We do, we do have that. Our main application um, does have kind of some more integration style tests that need a real database, uh, and then we have a bunch of unit tests that don't. For the uh, integration tests, what we did is we have a single container that runs the build, so therefore it not only has the tools needed to do uh, all the syntax checking and, and run the unit tests, it also has, uh, in our case, MySQL running inside the same container. Um, and then uh, one of the things, it actually kind of worked out better. Because uh, when we had that, with the agents, it was the same thing. We had MySQL instances running on all the agents. Uh, and we had a lot more complexity around, we need to drop the existing database, restore it from a seed. We had a lot of that, and it was all kind of in those build steps, chunked out. Um, so what we did was, um, we started using uh, a, a Docker image as a data volume, so basically a data container. We basically just restored a backup of the MySQL seed for unit testing purposes into a Docker image, ship that, even as a versioned image, which is cool, uh, and then when the build runs, it just kind of attaches that as a volume to the build container. And it made it a lot faster, too, because we don't have to do the whole drop and restore. The seed's already loaded. It's in the right data format that MySQL can just start and consume it. So it just attaches right to the container, and you run your test. So that was, a, that was nice, because it was a performance win. It was a kind of like a distribution of it win. And again, we don't have a lot of complexity on setting up new agents. It just, it just kind of is. And it does it locally, too, uh, which was another problem. Uh, before we did this, um, if you wanted to run those integration tests, you were running it on your local dev copy of a database, and you don't want to constantly drop that and reseed it. So like, you wind up generating a ton of extra um, data in your local database, and that causes problems. Like that. So that's a good question. But yeah, so we, we have that. Um, we try to avoid that. Like A lot of our newer stuff, we go, with more traditional unit tests, we don't have as many integration tests, but that's something. What would the you know, the Oh, you, if you can come and get a or, oh, <laughs> first crack at a t-shirt. All right, but I'll, I'll try to remember you. Sorry? What the versioning of agents? Versioning of agents. Yes. Can you go into that a little bit more? Well, and there's a lot of people with big agents. And I'm wondering what layers you have in terms of uh, who's managing the block. So actually, that's that's almost the whole point, is that in this kind of setup, the Bamboo agent does nothing except host the Docker engine. It doesn't know anything about the software it's building. It doesn't know anything about the specific images it's building. Because we have that outer make file that is per project. So I have that in my project repository. And when that make file runs, it knows what image it needs to download. It knows what container it needs to start based on that image. And it knows how to tell it to go run its build. And that, that all happens inside the image. So the agents don't really have any software. It's, it's a Linux box with Docker Engine. And obviously, the, the software you need to be a Bamboo agent. It's got its, the jar or whatever that communicate back to the central Bamboo process. But that's it. There is no versioning of the agents because there's nothing installed on them. I don't need to upgrade PHP. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to install anything. Does it uh, slow down the container? Compared to pre-built Docker images, right? Normally, if you have pre-built images, you can start it much quicker. Yeah, we use pre-built images. So um, again, I can go back to the code. We use a pre-built image. What we do is um, we build the image out as a Docker file. You can build it locally or, or whatever. Um, and then you push the image up to your Docker registry or hub. And in this case, um, uh, this line here is just a reference to that Docker image that we're using. So when it hits the agent at worst, worst case scenario, the agent has never built this one before, or it's a version it doesn't have, and it has to download it from the registry, but that's the at worst case. And if you're hosting your own and it's in the same network, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty fast. So you do have that overhead, um, but it's usually minimal. In the best case, uh, you're not, you know, chances are you're not changing your build system as quickly as you're making feature branches. Uh, so even if you have tens of agents, chances are they're all going to have the image after a day uh, of builds. And so um, at that point, it's as fast as starting any Docker container. So you mentioned about the artifacts that you have like a you know, market volume for. Do you also do something like that for workspace we use across agents? 
Like if, yeah, yeah, we do. So I didn't do it in this set, but there are some tools. I mean, obviously, it's not ideal to constantly download everything from Composer or if you're using NPM packages. Um, so uh, again, and again, that's what's kind of cool about it. I mean, you will come up with your own conventions, but one of our conventions is we have a directory on every agent, which is kind of the, the starting point for, for shared storage, if you will. So um, the, the make files then are responsible for saying, oh, your NPM cache directory, mount that at this volume. Your, your uh, composer directory, mount it here. Um, so that allows us to take advantage of caching on some of those package management tools. Um, and of course, you know, you can speed it up further if you have your own mirror for those things, but that has nothing to do with the container. Yeah. Yeah, so you can do all that stuff. Uh, do you have this release somewhere on GitHub or anything? It's not a thing, so it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to like open source it. Yeah, so what I was intending to do um, was clean this up a little bit, because um, I just ran that in our real build system. So um, there's really nothing in there that's proprietary or um, sacred, but I'll probably remove anything that has the word Schoology in it, and I won't use our Docker registry. Uh, and then um, I'll, I'll be happy to, to share a, a GitHub repo with kind of a, this app, basically. Um, and then you can look at it. And again, that's the thing, is you don't have to we chose make files because there is no de facto standard for build runners for PHP, and we were predominantly PHP shop at the time. If we were predominantly a Java shop, we probably would have said, okay, Gradle, or maybe we wouldn't have this problem. Maybe everything just would have been isolated enough in Gradle. Um, but whatever your build runner is, you can use that. You don't have to use a make file. There's nothing special about a make file. Um, whatever your build runner is, it's just, this is a pattern. You need to think about it as a pattern, not a piece of software. Yeah, for folks who want to see some GitHub examples, Search for the word Jenkins file, and you'll get this wrapper, you know, which can then call anything like a PHP builder or an NSH or a batch command or an EXE. And then within that, you can do the Docker builds, basically. Sure. So what you're doing with the make files right now uh -huh. is you're basically invoking a, a Docker container that actually builds the other make, the inner make. Correct. If you use the Jenkins file, it's your higher level make file. Yeah, sure, yeah, exactly, you can do that. Um, that's the other thing too though, what's cool about this, I don't know, like I said, I'm not a Jenkins, I, for whatever reason I've been predominantly using, um, I was Microsoft for a long time, don't hold against me, but, um, right. so um, I'm, I, you know, Bamboo's always kind of been my more open source uh, build tool, but the, um, yes, sure, use that, that makes sense. Um, the only disadvantage of that is that this is agnostic, but again, it is just a pattern.